we will talk about the machines, very important stuff. And uh, we have David with us from Earthly, who will um, present us some settings, um, because in the end, um, you need to rely on, on your application specialist to set up the machine for you individually. And that's right. For every surgeon, we set up the machine individual because every one of you guys do things a little bit different. That's why there is no perfect setting that suits for everybody. The most important thing is when I join a surgeon in the OR that I look for the first two, three surgeries, how he is, what's his technique and what's his, his approach. And then we find his uh, sweet, spot, sweet spot together. Yeah. Usually the, the easy FACO technology, uh, the approach is that we use a little bit higher settings than I would say uh, the average in the market, because those things just make the fluidics and the physics a little bit uh, better working for us. All right, so I think we have a very conservative FACO 1 mode is where, you, where, you, where we do the groove. Uh, we have a very low flow with 20, right? And um, we start at uh, 100 millimeters of mercury um, with the uh, FACO, right? Um, that's what we use to groove. I and would even say with those settings, you are even on the, on the higher end. Yeah, ah. I would say average, we often have something like uh, 80 milliliters of flow and 80 to 100 uh, millimeters mercury of vacuum. So with 100, you're already on the, on the, on the, on the higher end uh, regarding the vacuum. And then after we've tried the first, oh, we've designed the first groove and made the f um, two, two halves, when we go into quadrants and do the chop, we have a higher flow with a higher vacuum. Um, Bottle height is always quite uh, quite constant. Um, how would you how would you change that um, for for a younger or older surgeon regarding the vacuum? first of all, if it works for you, I wouldn't change anything. Okay, uh, but especially for the beginners, uh, in my experience, higher values are sometimes making it a little bit easier, because as we know, with easy fake, we'd like to work with occlusion. And when we use a little bit higher values, like maybe a flow of 40, 45, and a vacuum of 450 to 500, it's easier for the younger surgeons to have a quick occlusion or to find occlusion quicker. Yeah? And the more we use occlusion and the more we work under occlusion, the, the better it just uh, works. But if you have an occlusion of 550, for example, right? If, if you crank it up to 550, and you, um, you, have, you have an occlusion there, isn't, isn't there the danger that you really just um, suck in the, um, the nucleus and then you wrap the capsule back? Or how can, is, is there a way to control the, um, the, the high vacuum once you reach the occlusion? It's a good question and it always also is, depends a little bit on the eye. Yeah? Uh, as you say, of course, uh, especially when, you, when we work with very hard nucleus where there is no cortex left, and you eat that last fragment, you need to watch a little bit out and maybe reduce the flow and the vacuum a little bit. But if it's like a standard European cataract where you also still have some cortex cushion left, usually the fluidics do the job and you not need to be afraid, even with higher fluidics, that the capsule you know, you know, is coming. Lucas, you, yeah. your steps during the cataract surgery, where, where would you like to optimize things right now well, where I, you're standing. I, use, I go into direct chop mode because I'm, I'm not doing the groove anymore. It's just, uh, as I said, to save uh, baco time and everything. So I basically use this, this setting or a similar setting. In terms of the, the vacuum, I think we need to, to try. I mean, um, I, just to see what, what the setting is right now, to, 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 to test it, if I go lower, if I go higher, and to see how is it uh, how is going. Because uh, you need to get a feeling yourself. Probably. Yeah, especially as I see you work with the speed pump, yeah. which gives you uh, the opportunity to control the vacuum as soon as you have occlusion. And then you should definitely have a try if you work with uh, higher vacuum settings uh, to play. Yeah, As soon as you have occlusion to see how you can uh, increase the holdability, especially when you do direct chop to have a tighter grip on your fragments and to see how that works for you.
There is another thing. I mean, we have obviously the OS4 that we like, but there is also, I, I call this the Navy Seals of FACO machines. Yeah. That is the Cataracts machine there. Um, I started, of course, I started out um, using the OS4 entirely for the posterior segment, and obviously they need that. But if you if you are in the jungle, jumping out of the plane, and you need to do a FACO, uh, swimming somewhere, just get the yeah. uh, get, and just get grab the it like this, and then yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it comes, I think, uh, it comes in a very cool bag. It's a leather bag that looks really like the fifties. Yeah, it looks uh, like the those uh, pilot cases. Yeah. yeah. So you, when you take it on the plane, you can also pretend to be a pilot. Yeah. <laughs> and when you get out, you're searching again. Yeah. Uh, I, I, kinda I think this is amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing device. It's it, really obviously, this one is uh, the, the bigger brother uh, or something like that. But I think the, the amount of, uh, of stuff, what is here inside this machine, even tops this one because, it's so, because of the size. And we, we work in, uh, in Trier in, uh, in two rooms. And in one room, we have this one. And in the other room, we have that one. And there's absolutely no problem to change from uh, no. one No, especially, I mean, of course, on this machine, you also have the choice of a Venturi pump. But on the cataracts, you have the choice of the peristaltic pump and the speed pump as well. And if you do your FACOs and your preferred pump is beep, you won't feel a difference in your daily FACO. Get the technician in. Every, just give him a call and tell him, hey, have a look at two or three FACOs. And then, you know, pimp my settings. That usually is, is a good thing. I have um, a shout out to Daniel Arnold, who has been coming to my OR for the last... Um, 10 years and really always giving me the, the edge and the next push. Thanks for having David here um, with the Earthly team.